out. <laughs> Hold on. You're going to start playing now, okay? <laughs> Check. Oh. Good morning, Rosewood Church. As we gather this morning in the sanctuary to worship, we welcome you on this cold January morning. And for those of you who are joining us online, welcome. Who is like our God? He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the almighty creator of heaven and earth, our refuge, our strength, a present help in times of trouble. When the world shakes, he stands firm. When the storms rage, he is our shelter. In him we do not waver. In him we do not falter. He is the mighty Lion of Judah, our conquering King. He is the author and finisher of our faith. In every season, every trial, he is constant. He is sure. Our God is unmatched, unparalleled, and unbeaten. He holds the universe in his hands, yet he knows each one of us by name. Who is like our God? I invite you to stand with us this morning as we worship our God. Turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like Awesome and power our God, our God. Oh, our God, our God, into the darkness you shine, and 
Amen. God is so good. He is so faithful. And there's nothing like being in his presence. Amen. Thank you. 
to be seated. Father, indeed, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come. We pray that you would come and flow through this place. You are welcome here, God, and we pray that you would inhabit the praises of your people, that you would come and do what it is that you long and desire to do in and through us as individuals, as families, as a church, as the body of Christ. God, we thank you for your presence because it's in your presence that things happen. It's in your presence that we experience miracles and bondages breaking. It's in your presence that we get delivered and we are freed. It is in your presence that we see lives changed and transformed. And so God, we want more of your presence. And so we say, Holy Spirit, come. 
and have your way for we desire to meet with you and you with us and we pray father that you would help us to forget about our circumstances to forget about what's going on around us and focus on you god may we worship you for who you are may we remember that you are bigger and greater than our circumstances that you are so much more than our human minds will ever be able to comprehend and so father we come humbly before for you and we say Lord we are weak but you are strong we need thee every hour and so Lord you know the needs of your people this morning we pray for Donya Walcott father as she is in hospital right now in labor may you touch her body may you keep her and the baby safe we thank you for Ismay's daughter-in-law and family and we pray God for a safe and healthy baby for a safe delivery God that all would go well that there would be no complications have your hand upon her and upon this precious baby within her and may you indeed guide and do what they need you to do Lord have your way father we pray for Patrick Alfred as he goes in for major heart surgery tomorrow morning we pray that your spirit would go ahead of him Lord that you would go before him and stand behind him and cover him on all sides may you indeed lead the surgeon and the medical team to do what they need to do to accomplish Lord in his heart what is needed but Lord give him and his family the assurance to know that you are with them and we thank you God that there is nothing that is too difficult for you there is nothing that is too hard for you to accomplish and so we look to you and we pray that your will would be done and that you would have your way father you know the different needs that are represented here today those who are bereaved and who have lost loved ones we pray for those who have special health needs and other special prayer requests. Father, by your spirit, flow through and meet with each one. May you have your way, God, as we look to you, Father. You tell us that when we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, that you will add everything else to us. And so this morning, we come seeking you, Lord. We come seeking you and asking you, oh Lord, to have mercy upon us, for we need you. You. We pray that you would pass us not, O oh gentle Savior. Do not pass us by. You know each need that is represented. May you indeed touch, heal, restore, mend, heal, do whatever it is that each one needs according to your will. Father, we pray indeed that you would help us more and more to become the people that you desire us to be. Help us, oh God, to worship you in spirit and in truth, not just on Sundays, but on every day of the week that we would reflect, Lord, your beauty, your glory, and your majesty in and through our lives. Lord, we know that our world needs you now more than ever. There is so much that is going on. And we pray, Father, that you would come and that you would give hope to a world that has gone so dark, that you would come and that you would bring peace, that you would bring all that we need for those who are struggling in different world areas because of war, because of famine, because of earthquakes, whatever it is that may be going on. Father, we pray that somehow through some means that you would meet and encounter counter your people and that people would turn to you father lord we pray that you would have your way we thank you for this opportunity to worship you today we thank you for the ability to gather together as your church and we pray father for a fresh spirit to fall upon this place that your spirit would touch pastor nick your man servant anoint his lips oh god and may he bring forth your word to challenge us to stir up in us that desire to change truly lord we desire to please you in everything that we do and so help us god help us 
to be faithful because we know that you are always faithful. Thank you for your love that is unchanging, that is unconditional, that knows no bounds and no limits. And we pray, Father, because you are our great Father, the one who lavishes us with every good and perfect gift, that you would open up the floodgates of heaven and that you would pour out upon your people what we need. We thank you, God, that there is no limit to your resources, no limit to your power, no limit to what you are able to do. And so, Father, may we be receptive to what you have to say to us this morning. May we be willing to be changed. May we be willing, Lord, to do what is necessary to draw closer to you. And so we commit the service now into your hands. We thank you and we pray that you would come and truly have your way. Meet with us this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture is taken from Psalm 89, and it says this, I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. Young and old will hear of your faithfulness. Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens. The Lord said, I have made a covenant with David, my chosen servant. I have sworn this oath to him. I will establish your descendants as kings forever. They will sit on your throne from now until eternity. All heaven will praise your great wonders, Lord. Myriads of angels will praise you for your faithfulness. For who in all of heaven can compare with the Lord? What mightiest angel is anything like the Lord? The highest angelic powers stand in awe of God. He is far more awesome than all who surround his throne. O Lord of God of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you, Lord? You are entirely faithful. You rule the oceans. You subdue their storm-tossed waves. You crush the great sea monster. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours and the earth is yours. Everything in the world is yours. You created it all. You created north and south. Praise your name. Powerful is your arm. Strong is your hand. Your right hand is lifted high in glorious strength. This is the reading of God's word. And now I invite our children to meet me in the foyer so we can go downstairs. Good morning. You survived the snow weekend. Congratulations. We would like to welcome all of you to church today, whether you're with us in the sanctuary, worshiping with us online, and we welcome our guests today. Thank you for joining us. Well, I get to celebrate birthdays today, and so we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to put the birthdays on the screen, and I'm going to read the names, and at the very end, we're going to celebrate everyone, okay? All right, we want to wish very happy birthday to Laurel Lawler, Esther Bassoon, Renee Gordon, Marcia Chan, Monica Daniels turning 85. Okay, we can clap for Monica. Woo! Congratulations, Monica. Christina Onafrychek, who's turning 18. Ethel Takawera, Gospel Nabazi, turning 22. Cameron Alfred, Rebecca Almathaz, turning seven, 17, and to Irene Bridgelaw, joining us from Trinidad. We want to wish you a happy 73rd birthday. Let's celebrate our birthday, people. Woo! And we also want to wish a very happy 62nd anniversary to Earl and Lois McLeod on the fort today. Happy anniversary, Earl and Lois. Well, I have some Rosewood news. Just a reminder to the church board members that this Tuesday's board meeting will be held online at 7.30. For the Rosewood Ladies Fellowship, you're having morning at the movies next Saturday, the 20th of January at 9.30 in the morning. The movie is called A Question of Faith. Now they would like you to register today. There's a sign-up sheet on the welcome desk this morning, or you can always call the church office by the 17th. They need to know how many to expect. 
So join the ladies at that time. The bereavement journey. It's returning for another seven weeks of online sessions. Starting Sunday, February the 4th, from 7 to 9 p.m. Now you probably are wondering, is it for me? Well, whether you're seeking support for yourself or someone you know during the grieving process, registering for the bereavement journey is an opportunity to connect with others who are facing similar experiences. Learn from trained leaders who are providing guidance and support. So don't miss this chance to take a significant step in your healing journey. Register today. More information is in the bulletin. Well, I have an announcement for young adults and youth. We are hosting here at Rosewood Church the gathering winter 2024. This is a worship night. It will be hosted by the Canada Central District Naz Nazarene Youth International. The worship will be led by an amazing team of musicians from all across the district. And our own special, Angela Nanquil, will be our special speaker. So please check the bulletin for more details. I just have one last announcement for you this morning. And it's a personal message. And it's with mixed emotions that I officially share with you my, re my retirement at the end of January from the youth pastor position. I have been feeling that the Lord has been leading me to a different ministry all through this year of 2023. And I didn't know where he was taking me. And in August, he, in July, he made it very clear. And I've talked with friends, trusted mentors and family. I believe that God calls us to ministry, sometimes for a season. And I think that my season was to navigate the lockdown, to establish connections in virtual spaces, and to rebuild the foundations of the youth ministry. In my case, I think kind of like Elijah and Moses, the old's got to go so the new can come in. Kind of like the new year. 2023 is gone and 2024 is coming. So sometimes we get called into ministry and we have to be obedient. And sometimes we get called out of ministry and we have to be obedient. So as God has removed the call of ministry from me at this time, I will not be continuing on the path of ordination. Now, I don't know where God's going to take me in ministry for 2024, but I am open to him and to his leading. And I know he will put me where he needs me. But I am thrilled to announce that the Rosewood Church Board hired Angela Nanquil, who has been a volunteer youth leader with us for over three years. She's loved and respected by our youth, our parents, and our leaders. So please welcome Angela as your new Rosewood Church Youth Director. And I'd like to call Raven up. Raven would like to say something. Good morning, Rosewood Church family. My name is Raven Yemiche, and this is Avalon. You want to say hi? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I also have some news to share. Um, earlier, well, late last year, my husband started looking outside of the province for work opportunities that are more suitable for his field. And in late uh, October, he got a job opportunity in Fort St. John, British Columbia which is a very small, remote city. It's very north, <laughs> um, about 14 hours drive north of Vancouver. So he left, and he's been there since the, about the end of November. And in just under three weeks' time, Avalon and I will be joining him, leaving our home here in Toronto. <laughs> 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 leaving, um, yeah, our, our, leaving our immediate family, our extended family, um, my Rosewood Church family. I've been a part of this church since I was four years old in 1997 at Alex Muir Boulevard. And um, I'm like, I love traveling, going on vacation, but I never really pictured leaving here. So this is a huge change for us. Um, it, it'll be just the three of us out there. And um, we're excited for the opportunity and, and everything that this means for our family. But of course, we're going to miss all of you. And uh, being here and 
you know, having you see him grow up and him joining caravans and being with Bria downstairs with the kids and everything. So um, just pray for us. Please remember us. We'll be watching online as often as we can and, and thinking of all of you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I get this. That's about it. Sorry. No, before I go, um, I am happy to announce that um, on a permanent basis, Olivia Williams will be our office administrator. So I'm very happy to have helped with that transition. Um, during this time throughout my mat leave and she's done an excellent job and you all know her she's also like grown up in this church from the 90s um she just like a year younger than me so <laughs> we can have the same upbringing here at rosewood so I, I hope that you also um you know continue to extend to her the um the love and support the patience and everything um that you've shown me as i've been your office administrator since 2018 so thank you <laughs> your pastor Thank you. Thank you very much, Raven and Pastor Cindy, for sharing with all, with all of us. Uh, many of you here have known Raven since she was a little girl in our church. And across the years, she has volunteered in so many different areas of our church family and our ministries. And she served beautifully as our office administrator. And as you know, uh, she has been on maternity leave with this little sweetie boy, Avalon, and uh, we are going to miss you. We are going to miss you. As she said, her husband uh, has already traveled to British Columbia, and she'll be leaving to join him, I think, February the 5th, right? Yes. Um, if anyone wants to drive her there, um, she might take you up on it. <laughs> For, she says 41 hours. Actually, I think it's more like 50, 50 hours. But I wouldn't advise anyone to drive during the winter season. Yes. Well, uh, when she began her, her uh, uh, time with the baby, her maternity leave, this other young lady took over. Olivia took over for the period of time. And we're very grateful that Olivia is going to continue on now in this permanent position. And uh, we're thankful, and I'm very thankful, that Pastor Cindy, my wife, has done an excellent job over these four years. Over four years, just as, just as these two ladies have done an excellent job in their respective ministry, Cindy has done an excellent job as our youth pastor and uh, personally I was surprised myself when she told me that she was feeling that uh, she needed to step down and let someone else to step up as the youth director or youth pastor. I actually tried to talk her out of it. I, uh, for several months actually, I tried to talk her out of it because I said, you're doing such a great job. All right. Now, uh, when, when she first told me back over four years ago that she wanted to apply for the youth pastor position, at that point, I said, I said, no, no, I don't think you should be our youth pastor. I don't want you to apply for the position. And um, um, that was my response to her for, I think, five or six months, five or six months. And it wasn't that I didn't have confidence in her. I knew she would do a great job, but I, I said, you know, I'm not sure that it's a good idea for spouses to work together. That, that, that's true. I mean, in some companies, they say, you know, we won't let your husband or wife be hired here. And so that, that was my initial response. Uh, but after a lot of pressuring from our, from our youth group and from the youth leaders, and the, many of the young people and pressuring from our church board over four years ago, I, I finally gave in. I finally gave in and I said, okay, all right, you want, past, you want Cindy to be our youth pastor. I give in, I give in. And I'm glad I did give in because she has done an excellent job and we thank the Lord, amen? All right. Yes, you're like in microphones already. What would you like to say? Here, okay, uh, I hold it, you speak. Okay, Avalon, what would you like to say? You want to say, I, I love you, Daddy? Tell, tell Daddy many miles away that you love him. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Let, let, us, let us pray, shall we? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful indeed for these four very special people here. We thank you, O oh God, for Raven's outstanding investment in the life of our church across the years since she was a little girl. And Lord, thank you for the, the excellent skills that she developed as, as one of our main sound operators and technical staff members, O oh God. Thank you for the wonderful way in which she has served as our office administrator and marvelous way in which she trained, Lord, the beautiful way in, in which she trained Olivia to take over for her. And so, dear God, we just pray that you will, you will just bless, bless Raven as she heads out to British Columbia to join her husband in their new home, new town, a new environment. Keep them safe, Lord. And just, just remind them, remind them to keep looking unto the Lord for their help and strength. And Father, we're, we're so thankful for the wonderful ways in, in which Olivia has invested herself over the months and she has served as our office administrator. May you now continue to help Olivia in all that she does on your behalf and on behalf of our church family here in our offices. And Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the beautiful way in which Pastor Cindy has invested in the lives of our youth and has developed an excellent youth leadership team. And we're, we're grateful, Lord, for her sensitivity to you to do her best for the teens and for our church. And now, dear Lord, as another precious young lady steps up, Lord, we, we pray for Angela. We pray for Angela. She steps up into this position of youth director. May you hide, may you help her and hide her behind the cross, O oh God, and empower, empower her to do her utmost best for Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for the ministerial studies that she's going through, Lord, for her work at the seminary, and we just pray that the courses she has been taking, the courses she is uh, continuing to invest in will further equip her to be the outstanding minister that you want her to be. And so, our Father, we thank you once again for these four precious people. We thank you for this little boy, O oh God, for Avalon, and we pray for your blessings and protection upon him. Bless him in his life with mommy and daddy in British Columbia. And we pray, we pray for the grandparents here, O oh God, who are going to miss, miss this dear daughter and their little grandson so very much. And we too, O oh God, are going to miss them so much. Bless each of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, sweetie. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for being up here, okay? Show your mom lots of love. Okay. Go ahead and give them a hand, church family, would you? Amen. Well, thank you, my friends, for, uh, for faithfully giving our tithes and offerings. I want to just remind us that at the end of the service, you can place your tithes and offerings at the back of the church there in the offering plates, or if you're in the balcony, they are right at the front of the balcony there. And uh, we just want to honor the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Let us pray, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you indeed for this week's tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And we're grateful to have Criselda share in music ministry. Blessings on you, Criselda. She's a teacher, music teacher in her school. And we're so glad for your wonderful investment of music ministry and in other ways here in our church. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, church. I had the privilege to be away with my son over the Christmas holidays and New Year's. So if I haven't had a chance to say Happy New Year to you, I wish you all the very best for 2024. 
Well, you know, as we look around, we can see in our earth and our world so many trouble, things happening, so much hurt, so much pain. And we know that God created us for his glory, for his will to be done in our lives. And as we go into 2024, we need to leave the pain, the hurt, unforgiveness behind. Leave it at the foot of the cross and let God rule in us. It starts with the church. It starts with you. It starts with me. And so as I sing this song, Jesus taught us how to pray. And so this song is the Lord's Prayer. Father, let your will be done. Father, let your kingdom come on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Oh, Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us. Forgive us as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Oh, let your kingdom come. Father, let your kingdom come. Oh, Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart father let your kingdom come oh father let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart give us this day our daily bread forgive us forgive us as we forgive the ones who sinned against us forgive them Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Oh, let your will be done. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory is yours. It's yours, it's yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Griselda. Yes, what a beautiful message and song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to commend all of you who are here in the sanctuary of Rosewood Church of the Nazarene today. It's obviously been a tough few days with the weather. It's been very wintry, cold, icy, and snowy. And I want to congratulate all of you here in the sanctuary for being here today. Many of you 
in our church family know Pastor Esther Badu. Pastor Esther Badu. And I just want to share with you the fact that her dear mother passed away this week at the Brampton Civic Hospital. And if uh, you were in some of the prayer sessions of this week, you would have heard of uh, what has happened. And uh, others of you probably are just hearing for the first time. But I just want to ask us to, to pray for Pastor Esther Badu and her family. She is actually presently in Cuba. She is speaking today at the uh, Cuba Missions Conference uh, with the Nazarene churches there. And uh, I assured her that, well, I did pray with her as she preaches there today. And she and a small group of team members will be coming back to Toronto this Tuesday, as far as I know. So let, let us remember the Boudou family, and we want to express our love and sympathy to all of these precious loved ones and others who have recently experienced the loss of a dear family member. Amen. And now today, I want to share with you on the theme of great ways to live in 2024. Great ways to live in 2024. If you would turn in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1, we will discover some very practical and very helpful truths that I believe can be enriching for all of us, all right? Great ways to live in 2024. If you can stand, please, for the reading of God's Word, would you just please stand with me? Beginning in verse 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae, who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, May God our Father give you grace and peace. We always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people, which come, which come from your confident hope of God, of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. The same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. You learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant, and he is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will better produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Let us pray. Thank you, dear God, for this beautiful portion of your holy scriptures. Lord, may you impact us by your Holy Spirit, whether it's through one verse or two verse, three verses or four, whether it's through one truth or another. May we truly be touched by your Spirit from the truth contained herein, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen, amen. Please feel free to be seated. Great ways to live in 2024. The first truth I want to direct your attention to is this, number one, look to the Lord for his richest 
blessings. Look to the Lord for his richest blessings. This truth came to my mind from Colossians 1, where we just read, in the second half of verse 2, which says, May God our Father give you grace and peace. Why don't you read it with me? May God our Father give you grace and peace. Now, I like to summarize grace and peace as the Lord's richest blessings. The Lord's richest blessings. And here is why. Grace is, is God's undeserved, unmerited favor. Undeserved love. That's what grace is. It is his undeserved and unmerited favor, undeserved love that he has for all of us. Grace cannot be earned, all right? It is something that is freely given by God to you and you and you up in the balcony and to me. And one of God's richest blessings because of his amazing grace is the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of your sins and mine that he makes possible. In the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, He, that is God, is so rich, so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his Son and forgave our sins. Amen? I say to you, look to the Lord for the blessing of the forgiveness of your sins and mine. Why? Why is the forgiveness of sins, your sins and mine, such a great blessing? Why is it so important? Because Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen? Now in our Holy Bible we read of many examples of grace. For example, there is Jesus's, there's Jesus' time of forgiving the woman caught in adultery. It's recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. The, the Pharisees, a religious group of their day, attempted to trap Jesus by presenting the woman to him and, and citing the law of Moses, which said a woman like her should be stoned to death. That's what they were saying to Jesus. That's what they expected. And in his wisdom and in his grace, Jesus said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Jesus' profound response highlights, highlights the essence of grace, unmerited, forgiving, and redemptive towards that dear woman and towards each one of us. By the way, as we have started this new year, is there anyone, is there anyone that you need to show grace towards. Is there anyone that you need to show grace towards? Perhaps a family member, a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, an ex-wife, an ex-husband, a government department, a politician, or a professor, or a pastor even. Is there anyone that you need to show some grace towards? God's grace is not only available for the forgiveness of our sins, 
His grace is also sufficient in all areas of, of your life and mine. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the word of the Lord says, And God, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance of every good deed. Isn't that beautiful? When the Apostle Paul was battling some kind of a problem, a thorn in the flesh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9, he says, Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away, to take away this thorn in the flesh, whatever it was. And then Paul goes on and says, each time he, the Lord, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My grace is all you need, Paul. My power works best in weakness. Wow, wow. Chris Tomlin sings a beautiful song called Your Grace is Enough, in which the chorus says simply, Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. It was beautiful for me to see that there, there, there have been 2.4 million views of that song when I turn to it and listen to, to it or part of it. This 2024, be encouraged. Be encouraged, my friends, as you remember that God's grace is enough. God's grace is adequate. No matter what you go through. Colossians 1, let's Verse 2 says, May God our Father give you grace and peace. Right? He says, May God our Father give you grace and peace. Peace is also one of God's richest blessings. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. Jesus says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. Let it be so, Lord. Let it be so. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16 declares, listen to this. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times and in every situation. Now may the Lord of peace give you His peace at all times and in every situation. That is my wish and my prayer for each one of us, each one of us hearing this message today. In 2024, there will be many things that might happen which will be inclined to rob you, to steal your peace. There are many peace busters or peace breakers, aren't there? The peace buster could be a doctor's report, a car accident, a job situation, a financial crunch, a person you thought you could trust, but they broke your heart. 
the peace buster could be a, a break in into your home has happened to us many years ago the peace buster could be a, a son or daughter or other family member who disappoints you in a very big and serious way the peace buster could be a major argument with someone that you weren't even expecting. Or it could be a vacation that turned out badly or which never happened at all. The peace buster could, could be getting stuck with your car in a, in a storm such as we had the last few days. This past evening during the bad snowstorm. Uh, a, few, a few of us pulled over on Highway 401 to try to help a dear lady get out of a little ditch that she obviously slid into accidentally. The good, the good news was neither she nor her son were injured, but the bad news was we just could not, we could not push her car out of the ditch. It was just too stuck. And so eventually I had to say to her, I, I'm really sorry, but you will have to wait for CAA to come and, and uh, tow you out. So we kind of go, or we go through all kinds of peace busters. And in those times, let's try to remember 2 Thessalonians 3.16, which says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times. His peace at all times and in every situation. Amen. Another beautiful Bible verse to remember is Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, which says, You, referring to God, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, that is the Lord, all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Oh, that's a beautiful verse. Write, write it down, Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. Ponder that. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. Is there an amen in the house? Amen. amen. What a powerful verse. What a powerful verse. Look to the Lord for his richest, richest blessings, which include grace and peace. Here's a second great way to live in 2024. Number two, take time to have wonderful conversations with the Lord. This truth obviously comes from Colossians 1, verse 3, which says, We always pray for you. We always pray for you. Obviously, having wonderful conversations with the Lord is referring to, to prayer. The Apostle Paul had marvelous conversations with God himself. He was earnest in prayer. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, we read, Never stop praying. Never stop praying. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 reads, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? What a marvelous promise. 
Now here are a few, here are just, just a few benefits of prayer. And if we were to take time, you could probably add another 50 benefits to, to, to this subject. But here are a few benefits of prayer. Number one, prayer develops and strengthens our relationship with God. I believe you want, we all want to strengthen our relationship with the Lord, don't we? Yes. Here's a second benefit. Praying helps us to make the right decisions, to make the right choices, the right decisions. When we've got major decisions, even minor decisions to make, let us turn to the Lord and say, Lord, what is your direction for me in this way? What is it you want me to do? What path do you want me to take? Amen. Here's a third benefit of prayer. I kind of already mentioned three. A prayer gives us direction in life, right? The second one was praying helps us to make the right decisions. Thirdly, prayer gives us direction in life. Fourth, prayer helps us to avoid temptations in life, right? Come on now. Tempta uh, prayer helps to avoid, helps us to avoid temptations in life. And number five, prayer can lead to miracles in your life and mine. Prayer can lead to miracles, yes. So I, I want to challenge all of us in 2024 to commit, to commit to praying for at least, at least 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. And, and, then, and then gradually, gradually make it, make it, 15 minutes a day and 20 minutes a day and 30 minutes a day and more, I invite us and I encourage us to spend more and more time communicating with the Lord, having wonderful conversations. And sometimes you'll do a lot of the talking and other times it is best for you to just sit, whether you're sitting in your living room or or, or kitchen, or in church, or sitting in your car and saying, Lord, what is it that you want to communicate to me? Amen? Amen? I want to sincerely thank those of you who join us for our Saturday morning prayer times from 9 a.m. till 12, and oftentimes we go till 12.30 or 1. Thank you, Mr. Ernie Hall, for, for coordinating and leading our prayer session Saturday mornings, during which time, during which time we pray for all of the individual prayer requests that you have submitted and which, which we have listed on, I don't know what it is now, uh, three or four pages, three or four pages. I want to also thank those of you who join us for prayer on Wednesday evenings after Bible study. I, I notice, I notice that when we finish the Bible study, uh, normally we have 50 to 60 people present for the Bible study. And, and after we finish the lesson, the majority of people stay with us for the prayer time. Thank you to those of you, those of you who pray in your small groups and those of you who pray individually on your own for the many prayer requests that we have here in our church. We are very grateful for your prayers. Let's continue on and in fact double our effort, double our effort to pray fervently. Amen. Well, here is a, a third great way to live. By, by the way, uh, some of you might wonder why I, I drink water. I'm not sure why, but sometimes my, my, my uh, mouth gets really dry. I don't know, looking at you gets my mouth dry. Yeah. <laughs> no, just kidding. I don't know why. Some, sometimes my mouth doesn't get dry and other times it does. Anyway. So, here's the third great way to live in 2024. Number three, 
Live your life with a beautiful, thankful attitude. All right? This truth uh, comes from the second half of verse 3, which says, We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God. The Apostle Paul repeatedly showed a beautiful, thankful spirit. No matter what was happening in his life, shipwrecks, beatings, all kinds of difficult things, he showed a spirit of gratitude. Uh, I, I was reading in First Chronicles in the Bible. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. And Psalm 103, beginning in verse 1, says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he, God, does for me. Amen? Amen? And in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, we read, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but here are a few benefits of taking time to be thankful. Taking time to be thankful. Number one, thankfulness reduces depression. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Thankfulness de reduces depression. A, a review of 70 studies that include responses from more than 26,000 people found an association between higher levels of gratitude and lower levels of depression. Very interesting. In other words, the more a person expresses gratitude and thanks, the less inclined he or she is going to get depressed. Ron Paul, did you know that? Now you do, brother. Now you do. All right? That's one of the benefits. Here's a second benefit. All right? Thankfulness can lessen anxiety. Thankfulness can lessen anxiety. Anxiety often involves worrying and negative thinking, right? Often about things that happened in the past or might occur in the future. If you find yourself focusing on negative thoughts about the past or the future, challenge yourself to find something that you are grateful for. Think about what you are grateful for and it will help reduce your anxiety. Are you listening? All right. Here's a third blessing or benefit. Number three, thankfulness supports heart health. Yeah. Several studies show that a grateful mindset reduces the risk of heart disease. Very interesting. And number four, thankfulness re reduces or relieves stress. Gratitude can help calm the nervous system. How about that? Some of you who have uh, been in scientific studies and uh, have been studying psychology uh, have probably come across some of these research uh, uh, papers and information. All right? And number five, okay, is a fifth benefit of gratitude. Thankfulness can help improve your sleep. Thinking positive thoughts before falling asleep promotes better sleep. And there is evidence that gratitude causes people to have positive thoughts about their life. So, there you are. Thankfulness, we could add to this, but if I add too much, then my wife will later say, 
why did you add so much stuff under that point? And then she and I have to, will have to have a nice discussion. And, uh, <laughs> she calls them fights, I call them discussions. <laughs> anyway, so here you are. Thankfulness, thankfulness reduces depression, lessens anxiety. Thirdly, supports heart health. Fourth, relieves stress. Five, improves your sleep. So no wonder, no wonder the Lord in the Bible repeatedly says, be thankful, be thankful. God, God knows why he repeats himself. Sometimes it takes us as a human race, it takes us a few decades or a few centuries to discover why God repeats himself. It's because he knows, he knows what we need to know, right? Right? That's a simple fact. Yes. At the end of our service today, our worship team will lead us in a beautiful song called uh, Gratitude. It, it, it's called Gratitude. And uh, he, here, are, here are some of the words from that beautiful, uh, mar marvelous song. They, they are just uh, precious, I, I, I thought. Um, the song says, all my words fall short, I got nothing new, how could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again, because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, and I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm looking forward to singing that song with the worship team at the end of this service. Amen. And speaking of gratitude, are, are you listening now? Are you listening? Yes? You up in the balcony, are you listening? Uh, hello? In the balcony, are you listening? All right. You online, are you listening? Okay. All right. We're speaking about gratitude. I want to thank the Lord, and I want to thank you as a church family for your giving to Cuba missions. Cuba the churches in Cuba are very poor. They have very little. Some of you have been on mission trips to Cuba and you know what I'm talking about. The, the churches, the people are very, very poor in that beloved country. And for several years we've been trying to help through, through a, a missions giving at Christmas time in December for Cuba. Well, I want to say a very big thank you because as of last Sunday, as of last Sunday, my friends, you, we have given for Cuba missions almost, almost $11,000. Amen? Amen? The, the exact figure is $10,973 and after today's offering, I'm quite confident it's going to go beyond 11,000. So when, 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 when that information was tallied and given to me, I could not help but give God thanks and praise. Thanks and praise to the Lord and thanks and praise to you, to we as a church family. Because like I said, those dear folks in Cuba are so poor this gift from us is going to make such a huge difference. And if you'll remember, at the beginning of December, I said to us, I said, you know, last year, last year we gave Cuba missions just over 9,600. And I said to us, is it possible that this year we could give over 10,000? And I didn't do very much arm twisting one bit. We just presented the need. And so, and so I believe after today, 
our total is going to go over, not, not just over 10,000, it's going to go over 11,000. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. Here is a fourth, here, here's a fourth great way to live in 2024. Number four, show an abundance of love for other people. Show an abundance of love. Colossians chapter one, the fourth verse says, for we have heard of your love for all of God's people. Colossians one verse eight says, he, Epaphras, has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. Isn't, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that marvelous? Verse, verse eight says, love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. God's Holy Spirit is the source of love in you, in you, and in me. Galatians 5.22, of course, says, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Wake up now. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Yes. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 34 and 35, Jesus says, Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Would you commit to the Lord and to yourself to show more and more love? Love to people in the church. Love to folks in your family. Love to people where you work or where you go to school. Love to people you bump into while grocery shopping. Yes? Six, six years ago on February 14, 2018, Time Magazine, it was interesting for me to see the secular world saying these things. Time Magazine published a very powerful article called Five ways to five 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 ways love is good for your health. Five ways love is good for your health. Written by Jamie Ducharme. Now here's a brief summary of how love is good for your health and mine. Okay, number one, number one, love makes you happy. Very simple. Number two, love busts stress. Number three. Love eases anxiety. Number four, love makes you take better care of yourself. Amen. Number five, love helps you live longer. Now here are a few other benefits that, that the Time article didn't include. I'm, I'm adding these other ones. Number six, love can, love can boost your mood, right? Number seven, love can win you more friends. Number eight, love can lead to even more kindness. Number nine, love inspires people to be more forgiving. Number 10, love improves another person's self-esteem. How true that is. Graham Kendrick, Graham Kendrick sings a, a beautiful song based on the words of Jesus called Love Each Other in which the chorus, the chorus just says, love each other, one another, love each other in the way that I have loved you. Walk together and whatever comes, love each other in the way that I have loved you. There is another song by Bob Gilman called Bind Us Together. We sing that on occasion. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with words that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, and that is why we sing. And so, my friends, here are some great ways to live in 2024. Number one, look to the Lord for his richest blessings. Number two, take time to have wonderful conversations with the Lord. 
Number three, live your life with a beautiful, thankful attitude. And number four, show an abundance of love for other people. For God has first loved you and me. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for these beautiful truths from Colossians chapter 1. Great ways to live in 2024. May you remind each one of us of at least some of these truths and apply them, live them out, put them into practice. And Lord, we look to you for your richest blessings. And yes, we want to have special prayer times. We want to have a thankful attitude. And may you fill our hearts with an abundance of your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Would you stand, church family? Would you stand? In that first point, we talked about looking to the Lord for his richest blessings the blessing of grace, God's unmerited favor, God's unmerited, undeserved love. It is because of his unmerited favor, undeserved love, that you and I can be forgiven because Jesus, the Son of God, paid the price for your sins and mine. So as we sing, some of you may want to come and say, Lord, I reach out, I reach out to your amazing grace and I want to accept and receive your marvelous forgiveness, your forgiveness. And as we receive that forgiveness, we experience more peace in our lives. Others of you may want to come and pray because you are going through a situation which, which is a peace buster and the Lord wants to give you peace. Peace in the midst of the uncertainty. Peace in the midst of the storm. You may come and say, Lord, the Bible says, may God our Father give you grace and peace. I, I need, Lord, I seek this peace that the Word of God speaks of. You can come, come. Some may want to just come to have a special time of thanksgiving with the Lord. As we said in point number three, live your life with a beautiful, thankful attitude. Come and just, just thank God and, and praise Him. And some may want to come and say, Lord, fill my heart with your love. Help my life to be one that is just so filled with love towards other people throughout 2024. The Lord loves you, and we love you. Feel free to come, kneeling or standing around the altar as you wish. Let us sing, please, let us sing. Amen, amen. Oh, yeah. 
each one of you and your families. We wish all of you God's richest blessings, His guidance and His goodness, His grace and His peace in this new year. I'd like to have the privilege of further praying with Brother Patrick Alfred the altar here if if you could come want to want to pray for him as he goes in for a very major operation tomorrow feel free to be seated or 
but whatever you wish, wherever you are, yes. Others of you, please gather around. Brother Patrick here, would you? Come, come. Our Heavenly Father, uh, truly there are many times that things arrive, arise in our lives that we don't understand and we, we don't have easy answers for. But we're thankful to know that we can lean upon you. We can call upon the Lord, for you are faithful. And we can trust in you. And so as Brother Patrick goes in for this very major surgery, tomorrow morning at the Toronto General Hospital. We're thankful to know that you are going ahead of him. Yes. We're thankful to know that you will work through the surgeon and the assistants, O oh God, and the other nurses to accomplish in his heart what needs to be done. Direct, Lord, the skilled hand of the surgeon. Direct, Lord, exactly what needs to be done and we ask that in the hours and in the days ahead, you will, you will heal up Brother Patrick. You'll heal up his heart. You'll do what is necessary. You'll give wisdom to the doctor, Lord, as to what to do about that artery that, that is under some concern. Oh God, some trust in chariots and some in horses, the Bible says, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. And so we trust in you for Patrick to bring about the healing, the restoration for a man who has loved you and served you for many years. May you comfort, Lord, his precious wife, Chandra, and the rest of the family. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful ways in which Patrick is being supported by the love of his family and friends. And so we look forward to good reports from Patrick and from his doctors following this surgery. And may you be the great comforter and helper for him and for the whole family. That is our prayer. Pastor Lisa, would you continue? Father, indeed, we thank you that there is nothing that is too difficult. Amen. And so we pray for your peace. We pray for your assurance. We pray, God, indeed, that you would remind them that you are the same God who healed the sick, mm -hmm. who raised the dead, Amen. and you are more than able. Yes, Lord. And so, God, may you indeed give Brother Patrick calmness, peace, and assurance that you are with him for you Amen. promise that you will never leave us or forsake us and you will go before us and so lord may you cover him with safety and protection yes. as he goes in for this operation mm -hmm. and may you indeed remind him that you are there and so we commit him we commit chandra we commit the whole family into your hands and we thank you for what you have done and for what you will do in jesus name we pray Those of you, especially who are early risers, uh, I invite you to pray for him. He's going into the Toronto General Hospital at 6 a.m. and surgery is supposed to begin around 8 a.m. All right. Okay, brother. We're with you. Thank, you. thank you all for all your prayers and your love, and I have confidence that our Lord will be there. Amen. 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 Mike. Yes, bless you.